Uh, hi everyone. I hope I'm audible. Okay, great. So let me talk about myself. So I'm Shashi and I'm tech lead and mentor at Geeks for Geeks. Before joining Geeks for Geeks, I was part of Adobe and at Adobe, I was a full stack developer. Many years in backend, but I worked on uh, front end as well using V8. Right. So, uh, like I was there for two years and I uh, built some application, uh, some web application using uh, String and React. And before, I mean, before uh, joining Adobe, I was part of Paytm, Paytm Volley team. So, at Paytm also, I worked on uh, String and uh, backend mainly. Right. So like in this webinar, we'll talk about the full stack, like what is full stack and what are the options uh, for full stack. And then we'll talk about uh, React for the front end and uh, Spring for the back end, right? We'll also talk about the other options like Django for the back end, then we have Node.js for the back end. Then for the front end, we have option for Angular. We have other framework as well, right? So we'll talk about some of them. Uh, and once we are done with those things, the the requirement, the scope, like what is the job scope for full stack developer and what should be the complete path to learn this thing. So we'll talk about all these things and then I'll show you a demo of a Spring Boot application, like how you can build a web service I and mean the backend of a web service using Spring Boot. Uh, we don't have that much time, so we'll, I'll not be able to uh, you know, uh, show you the code for React.js because I don't have that much time. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, uh, I mean, I'll simply show you uh, one simple Spring Boot application, like how we can build from scratch. And uh, yeah, so uh, and I'll talk about the basics of backend, right? So that is the idea of this webinar. Of course, in the in the end of this webinar, I'll be uh, announcing something regarding our. Uh, so we have uh, one online live course. Uh, for the full stack, so I'll talk about that that course as well, and I'll announce uh, one coupon for. Uh, so I'll I'll talk about the offers of that course, right? So that is the agenda of this webinar. Okay, so okay, and also you can ask your doubt. So you can ask your question, I'll, and I can pick your question from the chat section. So you, I mean, we can make this session interactive. Uh, right. So you can ask your doubts. I'll be taking your doubts, and uh, I'll try to answer your questions. Okay. Okay. So uh, I hope uh, you know, like uh, most of the companies are working on web, so they need a uh, backend, they need a frontend, so that they can do something, right? So, and it's not only about the frontend backend. Of course, they need some uh, mobile application like iOS and let's say Android application. So of course, these applications interact with the backend service, right? So that's why. Uh, I mean, every company need a backend where uh, you know they can do the data processing, they can interact with the databases, and they can you know they can implement the business logic, right? So that is the main purpose of backend. Like, right? uh, so you will have some uh, APIs which will be you know which will be uh, accepting the request from the client. Again, the client can be anything. The client can be the front end application. The client can be other backend service, the client can be Android application or the client can be iOS application. So the client can be any any anything, and uh, the backend will expose their APIs to you know. So let's say if you want to get something done, let's say if you want to use a service of a backend, then you will have to call that API, right? So the client will be calling those APIs to get something done, and the backend the the, the main task of the backend is to implement uh, you know some logic to to you know uh, complete that task right it can be uh, doing some data processing it can be interacting with the databases right so a lot of things are included in backend okay then we have uh, one thing called front end so front end means the i mean the portion of code which runs in your browser so normally it will be a combination of uh, you know uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. Again, we have a lot of frameworks for front end. Like we have uh, jQuery, we have Backbone JS, we have React JS, we have Angular JS. We have many 
many options for the for the front end, right? Uh, but the main purpose of the front end is uh, the UI thing, the user interface thing, and and so that the client can easily interact with the back end, right? Okay, so initially the companies used to have like separate uh, uh, back end developers and separate front end developers. So they had, you know, in fact, some of the companies still have the profile. Like they have separate profile for back end, they have separate profile for front end. But right now, uh, the startups, uh, you know, so if you talk about startups, they prefer to have someone who, you know, who has an idea about both the things. If someone is uh, working on full stack, so he or she will have better, I mean, he or she will have uh, more job options if I compare with the, uh, you know, uh, single front end or back end. So, yeah, so if I talk about the, you know, the future or if I talk about the job scope, the full stack developers have much more, you know, scope than other profile. Like, so if you only know back end, then of course you will have lesser uh, uh you know options if you only know front end then you will have again uh, selected options if you know uh, full stack in that case you can apply for both you can apply for front end you can apply for back end and also you can apply for the full stack role right so that's why it's better to go with the full stack so that you will you can have uh more job options okay uh and so in the full stack, you'll be doing both the things. You'll be doing front end and you'll be doing back end both, right? So that is the advantage of knowing uh, full stack. If I talk about the options of full stack, there are many, right? So, I mean, the one good thing about JS is JavaScript is you can build back end and you can build front end both using JavaScript, right? So that's why the React plus node is, you know, uh, is very popular. There's no doubt that React in JS is very uh, popular for the full stack. And that's why we have the modern stack. So modern stack means uh, it's Mongo, XSpace, R for React and N for Node.js, right? So basically, they, I mean, so modern stack is, is a kind of full stack, which is based on uh, React plus Node.js. So that is the one option. And uh, the good thing about that is like, you can build the full stack, the complete application using the same language, using the JavaScript, right? But if I talk about the, backend thing right like java is known for backend and a lot of companies are still using java for their backend like when i was part of paytm they use of course they use node.js as well for the paytm mall but for the paytm payments they use java only and there are many companies like amazon expedia i would say visa american express and uh, there are many companies who are using expedia uh, uh, again there are companies like uh, of course in adobe we use java so there are a lot of companies who who you know work on java for the back end thing mainly right so that's why i mean if you are going with the java for the back end and if you are going with let's say react or angular for the front end so that will be a, again a good combination because i mean if you talk about again the startups are uh, preferring to you know use modern stack or they're using uh, they're trying to use uh, react plus node because it's simpler to use uh, because i mean uh, you're using the same language for the for the full stack, right? You are using the JavaScript for both front end and back end. If I talk about, let's say, React plus Spring, or let's say, Angular plus Spring, or let's say, React plus Django, in that case, you are using JavaScript for the front end, and you are using Java for the back end if you're using Spring. And if you're using Django, then you are using Python for the back end, right? So that's why, uh, I mean, uh, MERN or Node plus React is uh, easier to you know, learn. But if, if I talk about the number of job openings, then of course the React plus Spring has the, you know, uh, like there are more vacancies for this profile for the React plus Spring, right? Okay. So, yeah, so that's why, uh, I mean, uh, again, all this combination like React plus Node, React plus Django, React plus Java, all this thing, I mean, all these frameworks are popular and you can learn any of them. My personal choice will be React plus uh, uh, Spring because again, Java is really strong and I mean, Java is uh, known for the backend application, right? Of course, Node.js is evolving and I mean, in future it might uh, 
overshadows Java, but right now, like Java and Spring is the is the main framework for the backend. That's why I'll I'll, I'll recommend you to learn Java and Spring for the backend, right? Again, for the front end, you can go with the Angular. Uh, again, we have another front called uh, you can learn view dot, uh, dot js. Uh, but my personal preference will be React JS because, I mean, uh, if you talk about the popularity or if you talk about the use cases, like React JS is little more popular than the uh, than the Angular JS, right? And again, uh, I have not built something in Angular JS. But I have the basic idea of Angular, but so I would say like learning React JS is a little easier than learning Angular JS, right? And there are a lot of inbuilt libraries, or I would say there are a lot of inbuilt uh, modules which you can use in your React JS project. So that's why, I mean, it's better to go with the React if I compare with the Angular or other uh, front-end framework, right? Okay, so this is about I mean the scope and the popularity and all these things about uh, this framework. Uh, again, there's no harm in learning modern stack or node plus react for the full stack, or you can go with the react plus Django. You can learn anything. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of companies who are working uh, you know, on these things. Like some companies are using react plus Django for their full stack. Some companies are using uh, Ruby on Rails as well for the backend. So I'm not saying that, okay, Java is the only one language for the backend. Uh, but if you talk about the most popular, it's it's still Java, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll talk about the complete path uh, for the front end back end, and then I'll show you the demo. Uh, but in the meantime, I just want to take some questions from your side. Like the one question from Aditi is, how much time it takes to learn full stack development? Uh, it depends, right? Uh, there's no there's nothing like a fixed time, but normally you can learn React in one month and you can learn, let's say, backend in one month. So two months should be enough to learn the full stack. Again, it depends like how much uh, effort you uh, you can put to learn these things. But normally two months should be enough to uh, learn this basic thing. Again, if you want to build something really cool, those things might take, let's say, one more month, right? So. I won't say learning something will be sufficient. You should build something to use them, right? Okay. So uh, building some project might take one more month. So it it can take total three months. Okay. Uh, one question is, what about going serverless using Fabulous? Uh, yeah. So it's interesting. So. In fact, uh, I mean, the good thing about Firebase is, let's say if you are building Android application or let's say if you're building any front-end application, uh, normally we need a backend so that we can store some data at the backend or we can, uh, you know, do authentication with the help of backend. But using Firebase, you can directly interact with the database without having a backend, right? Or you can do the authentication Using Firebase without having a backend, so that is a that that that's the cool stuff about Firebase. Uh, yeah, so it's good to know, but still, I think there is a need of backend. Like you can't ignore the backend thing. Of course, you can store data, you can do authentication without having a backend using Firebase. Uh, but there are a lot of things that should be done at the backend side. So ideally, we need a backend. Uh, you know to to do a lot of things, right? Uh, again, Firebase is good. Like you can build something like Angular, or, or you can build something on Angular or React or some mobile application like Android or iOS with Firebase. And with Firebase, you can do the authentication. You can do the you can store something in the database without having backend. So these things are just for uh, you know. Let's say if you don't have that much time to build your backend, in that case, you can use Firebase. But ideally, if you want to make an enterprise application, you need a backend. Like you can't just keep that backend thing. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Swamil, I I could not understand your question. Like thinking. So, do you want to build some startup? Okay. I mean, if you want to build a startup, in that case, of course, you. I mean, you can choose any anything. 
But if you want to scale that startup, in that case, you, I mean, when you will have a good team, you can change your stack as well. So you can start with anything. You can start with the modern stack. You can start with React plus Java. Um, Okay, one question from me is uh, how we do we deploy a project with React plus Spring online, like Heroku or DigitalOcean? Okay, uh, it's not true. So on, on Heroku, you can see, uh, so we'll have the separate separate projects for React, we'll have the separate project for Spring, right? So we, we will not have a single project or single application for both the front and the back end. So we'll have a separate, application for the front end which will be let's say which is uh built using react and we'll have a separate application uh using let's say spring boot and we can deploy both these application on heroku or on aws or on azure or on Google cloud we can use any any cloud provider services to deploy them right uh if you're learning these things for the first time i will recommend you to try heroku because it's simple to use uh it's not as complicated as aws again aws is quite popular but uh for simplicity i would uh, i would recommend you to go with heroku so you can build i mean you can deploy your react app application separately and then you can uh you can deploy deploy your backend application based on spring separately right and they can communicate with each other uh like the front end will be calling the apis of back end to get something done right so this is how things are deployed in the industry okay of course there are many more things like you will have the load balancer you will have the api gateway you'll have a lot of other stuff but of course you can you know deploy your simple uh, front end application based on react and simple back end application uh, on aws or on heroku Okay. Let me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one question is from uh, Shumesh. Like, how it is different from Java backend? Yeah. Actually, we have uh, a separate course on Java backend. So actually, that course is uh, specialized for the Java backend development. In that course, we teach them the Spring, Spring Boot, and REST APIs, and uh, uh, Spring Security, Spring uh, Actuator. Then we talk about uh, Redis, Kafka, we talk about microservices. So we talk about the core backend thing, like how you can, like how a backend developer uh, can build something from the scratch, right? So that course is only for the backend. Uh, the full stack course, and in the in the full stack course, we are teaching them the back end using Java Spring, uh, Spring Security. We are not covering the topics like Redis and Kafka because those things are I would say the part of advanced backend. So that those things are not part of the full stack course. Because what I believe is that if you if you know the basics and if you know the important things of uh, let's say Spring, that you can learn other things or other modules by yourself. So in the backend, in the in the in the full stack course, we don't have some of the topics like Redis and Kafka and uh, microservices. Uh, but yes, we have this uh, React. So yeah, the full stack course is uh, for someone who wants to learn the full stack using React plus uh, Java and Spring. The back the, the Java backend course is for someone who wants to learn everything about backend. Okay, and you can uh, uh, go through the course page to know the more details you know uh, about that course. Okay, uh, yeah. So I'll quickly talk about the path to learn the front end back end and then i'll quickly show you a simple demo like how you can build a spring boot application from scratch okay uh they shall know actually i mean uh, actually initially you can you know, do some like so using JSP, you can build the front end as well. But again, in JSP, you will be using JavaScript. So yeah, you can't build something without using, and you can't build 
front end without using HTML, CSS, CSS, and JavaScript because our browsers are not that compatible with other languages. So yes, for the front end, we will have to use the JavaScript. Uh, okay, uh, full stack on Geeks is enough for become a good full stack engineer. Yes, I mean you should be good enough to crack the interviews, and you should be good enough to uh, complete any task in your office. So I think yes, you should be like you will have the good start. Of course, you will have to learn some more thing, but those things can be learned when you uh, will join a company. So. After joining the company, you can learn those things. So yes, this course will be sufficient to start your career with full stack, and you will have enough knowledge to crack the interviews if they are asking questions on full stack. Uh, okay, should one go with Django if they want to prepare for hackathons, or maybe also explore ML path in future? Uh, yeah, so the good thing about the Python is you can like build backend using uh, Django if you if you know Python, and of course you can build uh, some models using AIML using Python. So that's the good thing about, about Python. You can do your data science work using Python, and you can build the backend as well. So yes, if you are uh, planning to explore the AIML path, in that case you sh you should go with the uh, Python and Django only. Okay? The, that advantage of working with uh, uh, data science. Yes, I mean, yeah, so I mean, if you can explore the freelancing jobs, you'll see like, okay, they, you'll have a lot of, you know, uh, you'll, have, you'll have a lot of work for uh, the full stack. And if you know React and let's say uh, Java back and then you will, you can easily get a lot of uh, work as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me quickly talk about the the complete path for the uh, for I mean to become a uh, front end developer, and then I'll talk about like how you can start learning back end, and uh, then what are the things that you should learn to be a complete full stack developer. So if I talk about the learning the front end. You should know the basics of HTML, HTML5. You should know uh, CSS. You should know how how we can you know uh, build a simple static website using HTML and CSS. Then you can learn uh, Bootstrap. I mean, it's not compulsory, but yes, you can learn, right? And then uh, you can learn the JavaScript. Again, there are a lot of things in JavaScript. I would say you should you should know like how we can manipulate the DOM using J JavaScript, then you should know how to, uh, like what are the arrow functions in, in JavaScript, what what are the features of ES6, right? Because th those things will be used in React or Angular, so you should know those things of JavaScript. So once you are familiar with the basics of JS, then you can start learning one framework, like it could be Angular, it could be ReactJS. Uh, as I said, my personal choice will be ReactJS, so Again, there are many tutorials on YouTube uh, with the help of which you can start learning React. Uh, see, the benefit of joining a course is you will be learning this thing, these things from an industry expert. Like I have worked, worked on these things in, in, in the industry. Another another instructor who, who is uh, so uh, uh, like I mean he is also working in coordination, so he has also a good knowledge of. Uh, React and how things work in the industry. So if you're learning from someone who has already worked on those things in the industry, you will have, I mean, you, you will have uh, the better idea to use them. But again, you can learn those things by yourself as well. Like, yeah. So yeah. So you can I mean, learn some concepts of React. Let's say you can start with how to how to create a small project in React, and then you can learn about styling React. React routers, then you can learn about, let's say, uh, how we can, uh, yeah, so then we can learn about, uh, let's say, MobX or Redux, then how you can use, uh, how you can do state management with Redux, uh, then how you can integrate tools like Firebase uh, with React, right? So 
again there is no specific path to learn react but i would say you can explore the topics of react and then you can build something on those topics let's say if you are learning redux then you can build some sample application using that concept or let's say if you are uh, using firebase with react then you can do th some authentication or, or or you can you know build an application to store some data on the firebase so you can learn things by building something in that way you will have some good projects and and you will have the better understanding of those topics right okay yeah so uh, again i mean uh, before learning react yes you might have to learn babel you might have to learn about uh, es6 you you will have to learn about webpack uh, you can learn about like how to test react components right so yes i mean uh, this this is the basic uh, basic idea about the like what should be your path for learning all these things again there is no fixed rule you can learn these things in any any other way as well yeah uh, but again there is no need of learning uh, let's say jquery or there is no need of learning backbone js if you want to learn jhs right because those things are not uh, useful if you are building something uh, you know using react right uh, okay, let's talk about the backend using Java and Spring. So to to learn the backend thing, you sh you should know the basics of Java. Basics means you should know how to write if else condition, for loops, and how to write functions. Then what is class? What is a object? What is an object in Java? Then the basic oops concept of Java. Then what are the basic corrections like array list and hash map? Then you should know file handling, exception handling, or the basics of multi-threading, right? Once you are done with all these things, you can start learning Spring. Again, there's no need of learning, let's say, Servlet or JSP or uh, I would say applets and then JFX, then Swing, uh, socket programming. So these things are not useful in the backend. So you can ignore these topics and you can start learning uh, the Spring, the backend thing, right? So again, in Spring, we have multiple things. We have a lot of things in Spring. Uh, the one thing is, uh, I would recommend you start with Spring Boot only because I mean you can learn Spring with Spring Boot because in Spring Boot we'll be using a lot of Spring concepts, right? So uh, and again there are many resources for learning Spring Boot. You can start with the documentation of Spring to 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 start to to, to start building something based on Spring Boot or Spring, right? Uh, and then once you're done with the basics of Spring Boot, you can explore Spring MVC, then you can explore REST APIs, then you can explore Hibernate and JPA, and how you can interact with a database like, like MySQL, right? Uh, then you can, yeah, then you can, uh, uh, so once you're done with the data access layer, you can explore things like Spring Security, then Spring Cloud, then Spring Actuator. Then you can learn about Redis and Kafka, like how you like like how the Redis can sorry how Spring Boot application can interact with Redis to store something in the cache. Then you can learn about uh, Kafka. And again, uh, you should be building something with with all these things, right? Let's say if you're learning Redis, then you should build something using Redis. Then only you'll be able to understand the use cases of Redis, like why do we really need uh, Redis in the back end? So my recommendation will be learn, I mean, you should learn things while building something. So yeah, so and these things apply everywhere. If you're learning front end or learning back end or learning anything, you should build something while learning all these frameworks or, uh, or technologies, right? And then once you're done with front end, you're done with back end, then you can, uh, I mean, build something. Uh, you can build a web application, full-fledged web application, uh, uh, using the front-end and back-end component, and you can integrate them to to you know complete the application, right? Uh, for the help, you can explore the projects on GitHub. So on GitHub, you can find a lot of projects, and with the help of those projects, you can you know you can know like okay how we can integrate a react in a spring boot application then you can uh learn the best coding practices or best coding uh 
examples uh, by going through those those projects right so yeah so these are the ways to learn all these things okay uh again i'll okay i'll take a few more questions and i'll quickly show you the you know show you the uh, simple spring boot application right? like how we can build from scratch so one question is uh how much ds and algo is required so these things are required to crack the interviews, like to, to learn back and front end. I don't think you need. So if you know the basics of uh, these things, like what is array, what is a string, what is array list, what is hash map. So those things should be enough. You don't need to know the trees and graph to you know start learning the front end or back end. So only the basics of these numbers is sufficient. Okay, let me quickly show you, uh, you know, like how we can build an application from scratch using Spring Boot. And that will take, uh, I would say, 10 to 30 minutes. Okay, let me quickly share my screen. Okay, so you can simply go to Spring Initializer. It's a web page where you can, you know, so from this page, you can create your sample Spring Boot application, right? So this is star.spring.io. Okay. So I won't take more than uh, 10 minutes to show you like how we can build Spring Boot application in, uh, from scratch, right? So I hope, uh, I mean, I'll be able to uh, understand this. Uh, I'll be able to explain these things easily, right? Uh, before explaining this thing, let me explain uh, the basic terms like what is the meaning of request, uh, what is the meaning of uh, request response and API and a web server, right? So let's say when we let me open Google.com. Okay. Let's say when we are searching something like searching on Google, right? So let me quickly it is all the other fields. Yeah, I can simply, I can simply write something like this, say google.com, then as search, which mark you could let's say searching right? Have the same response. Uh, search. So if you can see my screen, uh, you can see this URL, which is uh, google.com slash search and question mark, you're going to search in. So basically I'm searching, searching on Google, right? So this thing is called request. And the request parameter is a word called searching. And this HTML content, which contains some images, some videos, some text. So these things are called response. So we are getting this HTML page from server, from Google server. That's why, so this is the response we are getting from Google. So here browser is the client and google.com is the server. And uh, this thing is the request and this HTML page is the response. Right? So this is the basic meaning of request response and uh, client and server, right? Uh, and here search is the API. So API is nothing but a function, but a method which will be called by the client so like here for this function let's say search is a function and here the input is searching that's why we are getting this response as the output let's say if i'm changing this word as let's say i'm changing to uh pointing right and we'll have a different response right 
So I'm calling the same function. I'm calling the same API, and the request parameter, the input is is changed. Now the input is pointing. So I'm getting something else in the response, right? So this search is the I would say it, it's like a function. It's like a method uh, which can expect an input. Like here, the input was pointing and searching, and depending on that input, we are getting something like you know uh, we are getting some information as the response, right? So the search is nothing but the API, which is being called by this client, this this Chrome browser client, right? So this is the basic meaning of API. Uh, okay. I hope you are able to understand these things. I hope you can see my screen. Okay, great. Uh, hmm. So now my plan is let's build something. Let's build uh, a web service like Google. And let's build a, of course, we can't build something like Google, but let's implement a simple search API uh, similar to Google, right? And let's see how we can expose uh, uh, our API uh, so that client can use them, right? So I'm going to use a Spring. So I have selected. Uh, so Maven is a is a tool. It's a it's a build tool which helps us to do the dependency management. Yes, yeah, so I'll talk about that those things uh, once you join the course, or you can Google about uh, the Maven project. Like what is the meaning meaning of Maven? Uh, again, you can use Kotlin, you can use uh, Groovy for uh, building the backend using Spring, but Java is the, you know, it's very common for uh, Spring. That's why I'm using Java. Uh, you can you can go with the 2.3.3. So this is the Spring Boot version. Let's say I'm going with 2.19 because I have tested that version. And here, let's say my application name is uh, Let's say backend app. So this is simply the name of the application which I'm going to build. Let's say backend app app. And let's say I'm going with JDK 8. Of course, you can go with Java 11 or uh, 14 or anyone. But I'm going with JDK 8 only. Uh, let's say I'm going to, uh, since I'm going to build a web service, a web application, that's why I need the dependency of web, right? So I'm going to choose a web, web dependency from here, right? I have selected the Spring web dependency so that I I can use the I can build a REST, REST API, right? I can build and after clicking on this uh, generate button, I'll have a zip file which will have some sample code, right? So basically, uh, with the help of this page, we are, you know, we'll have a very small project with basic structure. So it won't have a lot of code. We'll have to add the code, but it will have the basic, uh, you know, basic files. It will have the basic structure of the project so that we can we can add few lines of code to get it running and to get it working, right? So you can, you know, yeah, so I have already, you know, downloaded that, that uh, project. So that's why you can see it's backend app one dot zip. But if you're doing it first time, you will have simply backend app dot zip, right? So the next step is you will have to unzip that folder and then you will have to import that unzipped folder to an IDE, right? So IDE means, uh, I mean, you can use Eclipse, you can use IntelliJ. I'm using IntelliJ, right? So, okay, so let's say if I have, uh, okay, so I, I have already an application here. So let's see how we can import the, you know, a new project in, in, in IntelliJ. So what you can do is you can click on the file, you can click on the new button, then you will have the option of project from existing resource. So. The idea is we are not uh, building project from the scratch, but but we are importing a project because we have downloaded a sample project from uh, that Spring initializer page. So we are going to import that project in that IntelliJ ID so that we can add some code and we can uh, build something, right? So actually, I have already see. I mean, that backend app is already 
there in my uh, test projects folder. So to import that project, you will have to select the pom.xml file. So you will have a pom.xml file already in that folder. You just need to select that pom.xml. And then you will have to you know, click on OK button. And then you have to click some more, uh, you know, some next, next buttons. And then you will be done with importing this project, right? So of course, you can Google like how to uh, import a sample Spring Boot application in, in, in IntelliJ. Or let's say if you're using Eclipse, then you can uh, Google about that thing as well, right? So I, I don't think it's a big step. So I have already, you know, uh, done that importing thing. So I'm not going to show like how to import that thing, right? So yeah, so I have already imported that project. Okay. And I have not added any code in this folder. So all these things are already there, uh, right? So one thing that you can do is you can simply build this project. So build means uh, like this project has a dependency of wave. So the Maven will download that dependency when we are building that project. So that that, that, that is the meaning of building. Building is basically similar, similar to compiling a Java program, right? And again, uh, so when you will have this sample application, you will have you you know you uh, already will have this file called backend so again the name can change like the name of my application was backend app that's why the name of this class is backend app application this name can change if your project has some different thing right so yeah so this thing was already there i have not written this code it was already there and it has a main method so I can run this code, right? I can simply, you know, run. Okay. I can I can uh, simply run this application from here. Actually, uh, I mean, currently we don't have anything, so uh, it won't do. Like we are not doing anything, so it won't do anything, right? So let's say if you want to build, or let's say if you want to create an API like search. In that case, I'll have to write some code so that our web service can expose an API like search API, right? So I'm going to write some code for that search API, right? So I'm going to create one more class. Let's say that class is, let's say the name of the class is controller. controller. Again, you can rename this class. Uh, the name is not that important, but normally, uh, the class which will be responsible for control, I mean, which will be responsible for accepting the request, its name should be similar to controller or resource or something. I'll talk about the naming conventions later if I'll have the time. So uh, I'll have to use one thing called risk controller. That means, okay, in this class, we are going to write some APIs. Uh, let, let me write a simple high API and then I'll implement the search API. Let's say I have a simple gate mapping. Let's say the path is high. And let's say, sorry, and let's say what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to implement a simple method called, let's say, so let's say we have a simple method called say hello. And this method will be called if someone is simply calling that high API. So it, and I'm accepting nothing in the request. And what I can do is I can simply return a string, like let's say hello code nuts, right? So we have implemented uh, a simple API. And what we are doing is we, so let's say if a, if a client will hit this high API, the client will get this string hello coders as a response. So let me show you. So to run the application, you will have to run this main method of this class, right? I think we are done with that. So you can see like, okay, the Tomcat has started. Actually, in Spring Boot, we'll have the built Tomcat. So we don't need to uh, install Tomcat separately. And our application is running on port number 8080, right? So let me, test this simple high API. 
from my browser right. so i can yeah so you can see uh, i'm i'm hitting you know this uh, i'm calling that api hi api and i'm getting that response from hello products right so it's a simple api right let's uh, write an api similar to search api okay now it looks like some of you are there great okay let me quickly show you like how we can implement uh, a search api hmm. so what i can do is i can simply write something like this it's a gate mapping so this gate mapping is for the gate api uh, of course you can explore like what is the meaning of a gate api but normally when we want to get something from the server we call the gate api so let's say we have api called search right uh, okay. again in this api also we are returning a string the name is search something okay in the input of this request we are accepting let's say a string like let's say i'm expecting a query parameter so what we can use is we can have uh, that this parameter here. Okay, so if you remember, if you, if you can remember this, uh, this, this is called query parameter. So it's a part of request. It's called request parameter, but uh, we are searching something that that's why it's called query parameter. So I'm going to implement an API something like this. That's why, that's why I need uh, a string to in the and so basically when the client will hit our API, uh, that input string will be captured within this queue, right? So what I'm going to do is let's say we have a, another class called database. Again, we are not using real database like MySQL or something. Let's say I'm, I'm going to use uh, something like, let's say, hash map to store something. So let's say we have a class called uh, database DB. So it's a, you know, it's a, just to simulate the function of DB. I'm not using the real DB. I'm simply using a hash map to store some data about some words. And so let's say we have a uh let's say we have a hash map uh, again we can get a hash map uh let's say here yeah, the key is a string and that is also a string so the idea is i'll just i'll be storing my information let's say about some information about such you know any word in this hash map only so let's say it is uh called Let's say a simple table or something. Let's say the table. <laughs> New. Let's say it's a data table or something. Data. Or let's say it's a storage. It's a storage. It's a simple hash map, right? Constructor, I'm I'm simply uh, initializing uh, initializing this storage, this hash map with some some words, right? So let's say uh, I'm simply putting let's say I'm putting something words such as let's say in let's say the value string. So such is a uh, you know key for this hash map, and in the value, let's say I'm put, putting some words more such let's say like Right. Let's say I'm going to use uh, I'm going to store uh, a pointing like red capital. Okay, 
basically uh, i have two uh, i have information about two words when you're searching on this content right? and let's say i have one method, method called search which is a public method and i'm simply returning a string about that word so basically uh, this search method will be called when i want to search a word from the storage it's a word the simple idea is i'll simply you know get from the storage which is a hash map and return the you know the details of that word to be stored as a value in the hash map it's as simple as that right now in the controller what i'll do is i'll create an object of database Uh, and then I'll simply call the search method of that database, and the input will be that Q, that query parameter which we are getting from the database. So let me simply run this application. So, like, okay, show you like how this is working. Let me read on this application. Running now. So let me try to hit that API. Uh, it will be in search. Let's say it should be capital. Get mapping search, then we have this. Okay, let me quickly uh, check that high API. Okay, and we should go with the HTTP only. If it was HTTPS, that was the reason of failure. And now let me hit that search API. Search. Uh, Q equal to let's say searching. This is just the training of the search. So we got the response, which is uh, get back. Let's if I'm changing searching to pointing, we'll have. A different response. Uh, see, I mean, if I'm passing a uh, another word, then we are getting null because there's no word in the hash map. That's why we are getting null as a response. So it should be. Yeah, so this is how we can. I mean, this is how simple to create, you know, a backend API using string and string. We just need to write some few lines of code. Of course, we need to write some more code to interact with the real database, but again, things are in build. So let's say if you want to interact with MySQL or let's say if you want to interact with any other database or any other service, uh, you don't need to write more than 10 lines of code because things are in build. So yeah, so this is, uh, you know, this is how we can create some application using Spring Boot for the back end. Right. I don't have that much time to, um, uh, to, you know, to, yeah, I don't have that much time to, uh, you know, uh, show you the code for, uh, let's say, React and other things out there. But yeah, this is, this is the, this is the uh, very basic thing, like, okay, how you can build things from scratch and, and uh, you just need to install JDK on your machine. If you have Maven, that's great. In fact, uh, with IntelliJ, inbuilt Maven, Maven is already there, so you don't need to install Maven to build these things, right? So yes, so you can start building a uh, backend uh, using Spring in this way. 
Okay, so I'll take few questions and then, okay, the one announcement is that like, our team will share a, a link for uh, you know the Google form. Okay, and once you're done with filling that form, so our uh, uh, course counselor will contact you and he will help you if you want to join our courses, right? And you will have, like you can, I mean, they will tell about you the uh, offers that we have. Okay, so you can fill that Google form to, uh, you know, uh, to know about more, uh, to know more about our courses and to know about the offers that we have uh, for the, you know, for the full stack course. Okay, the one question is: Is Spring Boot necessary for full stack? Uh, so Spring Boot is one way of building backend, right? So you can use Node.js, you can use Django, you can use Ruby on Rails. So there are many options uh, for backend. One uh, uh, Spring Boot is one of them. Okay. Yeah, actually, we will cover. Sorry, we'll uh, share that uh, uh, you know that Google form in the video discussion as well. So you can you know you can grab that link from there. I mean, if you want to know more about all courses, right? Uh, will you cover the basics of it? Yes, we'll be covering the basics of it. So the idea of this course is uh, to help them to learn things from scratch, right? So yes, we'll be covering uh, the basics of everything, the basics of React, the basics of Spring Boot. So you don't need to know anything about React to join this course. Uh, so I'm almost done. I'll take uh, one last question. Okay, so you know the basics of Java. Like you should know how to write simple if else in Java. You should know how to write, let's say, functions in Java. So the basic knowledge of Java is uh, compulsory. And then I don't think that th that thing will take much time because you can learn the basics of Java in, let's say, in two or three days. Right. Okay, one last question on my side is, okay, uh, do we also need to know about microservices in Java full stack and how much time we should take to learn basic things to become full stack? Again, I can't quantify the time, but I would say two or three months should be enough to learn the full stack. Okay, uh, yes, I'm done. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn if you want to ask some more questions. I'll be happy to help you if I can help you in any in any way. So I'm sorry if I if I could not pick your question because uh, I mean uh, I because I got a lot of questions. Why so it was not possible to take all the questions and answer all of them. So you can ping me on LinkedIn if you have uh, some more questions to ask. Okay. Okay then. Thank you. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the session. <laughs> yeah, so we can, uh, I mean, I can conduct uh, some more workshop on, let's say, front end and back end if you want me to conduct some more webinars. I can do some workshop workshop on React. I can do some workshop on, let's say, Advanced Java. So if you if you uh, want me to uh, do some work, some more workshop, then you can let me know. I'll do those things. Okay, then. Thank you.